Hi, this is Mark with QuicksVenture.com. In this video, we are updating our tutorial on the installation of MySQL for use with XBMC on a Synology NAS. Since Synology has upgraded to DSM version 5.0, they've ditched MySQL in favor of MariaDB. They also have not installed this by default, so we'll have to install an additional package. Uh, to make it easier, we're also going to install PHP MyAdmin from the Package Center. So, if you have a newer Synology NAS or just upgraded to version 5.0 and are looking to integrate My, uh, XBMC with MySQL on your NAS, here's how you do it. First, we need to enable WebStation under the Web Services in your Synology NAS. So, get yourself logged in, find the applications under Control Panel, and click on Web Services. You need to enable WebStation, and that's all. Click Apply and wait for it to finish. Once that's done, you can go to the Package Center Not quite done yet Okay, go to the Package Center and we need to install MariaDB and phpMyAdmin So click on the All tab and scroll down to MariaDB Click Install and this will download the MariaDB package, which is a branch of MySQL that uh, should be a drop-in replacement for MySQL. So any place where MySQL used to be the default, MariaDB should be exactly the same. It's free and open source under the GNU public license. We're also going to install phpMyAdmin, but we'll need to wait for MariaDB to install first. There's a dependency, so you can't install them both at the same time. I'm installing this on a 2010 version of a Synology. This is a DS110J, so it's a few years old, but it still runs just fine with MariaDB and my uh, PHP MyAdmin, running XBMC with multiple streams. I paused the video while it finished installing. It took about two or three minutes to install, and now we're going to install PHP MyAdmin. And this will take a few minutes as well, so I'm going to pause the video again. PHP MyAdmin has now finished installing, and you can see the Open button next to it, so we will open PHP MyAdmin. The steps now are the same as they were in the last video, as PHP MyAdmin hasn't changed much. So what we're going to do is log in with the root uh, user ID and no password, and the only thing that we need to do is to create a user. So we click on the Users tab at the top, and we will click the Add User button. Username is going to be XBMC12. It can be whatever you like. I choose XBMC12 because I'm using XBMC version 12. Password needs to be something. I'm also making it XBMC12 so that I remember it. Nothing else on my network will use this database, so security is not a concern. In your case, that may be different, so choose a user ID and a password accordingly. I need to grant all privileges on wildcard name so that uh, XBMC can create uh, databases with the XBMC12 name, and I'm going to grant all global privileges. Some of this may be unnecessary, but because again I don't need security in my SQL or in my installation of my SQL, I'm just giving XBMC full control. Click Go, and that will create a user. If you see your new user at the bottom with all privileges, then you should be ready to start XBMC. So you can minimize the uh, PHP MyAdmin window and go to wherever your XBMC installation is. We need to modify the advanced settings file to point to our new MySQL database. I'm using a portable installation uh, for this demonstration. Uh, if you're using a desktop version, you'll need to go find your user data folder, and it's under your local user folder in the app data folder and then the XBMC folder. If you go to the XBMC website and search for Advanced Settings in their wiki, it will show you the location on all platforms, including Linux, Apple TV, and uh, Raspberry Pi, Windows, etc. If this is the first time you're using Advanced Settings.xml, it won't exist by default. You'll need to create it. So you can just create a new uh, text file and name it Advanced Settings.xml, and then use Notepad to edit it. 
you need to fill it up with the following information. Uh, start with XML tags for advanced settings and then video database. You'll need to create a type which is MySQL. I know we're using Maria database or MariaDB on the Synology, but it's still going to follow the same parameters as the My, MySQL implementation. Point the host to the IP address of your Synology. In my case, it's 192.168.1.91. The port will always be 3306, and then the user ID and password are what you just set up in PHP MyAdmin. Finally, you need to give your database a name. This is not strictly necessary, but I choose to do it, and I use the same uh, name as the user ID underscore video, just for consistency with some previous versions. If you put nothing there, then XBMC will just give the database a name on its own. You also need to create a music database. Uh, all the parameters are the same, except that the name of the database will have underscore music at the end. Close out your tags and save your My or Advanced Settings file. Finally, if you have sources already set up, you can set up your sources.xml file here. Uh, after you have scanned your database and populated it, if you drop the advanced settings and source, sources.xml file on all of your clients, there will be no further setup that you need to do. So if you set this up in Windows and then take these two files and stick them on an Apple TV or a Raspberry Pi, as soon as XBMC starts, it will have access to the database, it will populate all the thumbnails, and it will already have your sources set up. So it's a really slick way of being able to just drop a client onto your network. Once you have all those uh, pieces of configuration set up, go and start XBMC. And the first time it's going to take a little bit longer. It may take up to a minute because it has to log into your database for the first time, create databases, and then fill in a whole bunch of tables and metadata. I can hear the hard drive and the Synology on the other side of the room. Working pretty hard. And then when XBMC starts up, when you click on videos, you're not going to have anything there yet. You'll have your sources if you set them up, but if you don't have your sources, then you'll go to Add Videos like you normally would the first time you run XBMC, add your sources, and set the content type. Because the database has not been initialized yet, my sources don't have a content type yet, so I need to set content. I'm just going to do my Films folder, which is populated with a couple of dummy files that have the right names for some movies. So select the content type, in this case movies, click OK, and then refresh the info. And XBMC will go and scan that content and apply all of the metadata. So now if I go to the home screen, I will have a movies section populated. Just waiting for this to finish up, and then I'll show you that everything came down. The other nice thing about XBMC version 12 is that all of your thumbnails are referenced in the database. So if you change thumbnails on one client, the reference will change in the database, and all of your clients will download the new thumbnail. So that's pretty nice. All thumbnails are always kept local, so there is no need to do any uh, uh, replication of your thumbnails folder or symbolic links or anything like that that we used to have to do. That's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Mark with QuicksVenture.com.